Welcome everyone back to the Real News Network. I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore. As we move into Black History Month, we wanted to sit down with our resident political prisoner and Black Panther Party producer and host here at the Real News, Marshall Eddie Conway, to talk a little bit about his life and work, and particularly about his book, The Greatest Threat, The Black Panther Party and the Counterintelligence Program. Eddie, welcome back to the Real News. Oh, thanks for having me. So let's talk about this in the context of Black History Month, again, which is just started here a little bit ago in February. Why is the focus on the greatest threat, the Black Panther Party and the counterintelligence program so important? Well, I think it's important in light of the current events with the Black Lives Matter movement and, and the Black Radical uh, Tradition Conference and a host of other kind of black organizing and activities that's uh, currently sweeping across America. Young people, I believe, has an interest now in what the Black Panther Party was, uh, what happened to it, and why it happened. And I think this book, The Greatest Threat, kind of gives an overview of what the Black Panther Party was. Uh, it also gives an understanding of, of how it was attacked and why it was attacked. And uh, in addition, it also highlights a number of people that end up either dead or in prison uh, to become political prisoners or in exile to become political refugees. And I think all of that's relevant to our history today. So let's just quickly go back and, and talk a little bit about what was or is the counterintelligence program. Well, the counterintelligence program was was a program operated by the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, deemed in 1968 that the Black Panther Party was the greatest internal threat to America. And it uh, mandated a group of people uh, within the FBI to organize a counterintelligence program that would sabotage the Black Panther Party's organizing, it would sabotage their uh, image, and it would either run them out of the country or jail them legally or illegally. That program then had access to all the different police uh, and law enforcement apparatuses throughout the United States from the state levels, the state police, uh, the federal levels, the uh, uh, internal revenue, all the way down to the local police uh, 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 departments. It used informers, it uses agent provocateurs, it even used a, a, a military personnel to spy on the Black Panther Party and then to engage in activities that Congress later determined was illegal to sabotage the operations in the various states that the Black Panther Party existed in. I think it's also important to note that, as it was pointed out in the Freedom Archives documentary, COINTELPRO 101, that everything that was done then that was illegal is now currently legal under the Patriot Act and other more modern uh, changes to, to the law and, and this whole notion of homeland security. So it's, it, I would think that it's an important lesson to learn uh, going back to the history that you experienced. Uh, given that all that was done to you illegally is now perfectly legal. And of course, it wasn't just to the Black Panther Party, right? It was uh, Hoover started his whole operation attacking Marcus Garvey. Uh, and then, of course, the COINTELPRO went uh, against not only the Black Panthers, but the Native American movement, the Chicano movement, uh, anarchists, socialists, communists, etc. cetera, um, creating exile, political pr imprisonment, and assassination. What so when you talk about Black Lives Matter today and other activists and other newly formed uh, efforts, what else might they want to consider as, as maybe preparation to deal with what you all had to deal with that was, again, illegal, but is now legal? You know. mm -hmm. and, and I guess one of the points is, like, way past the Patriot Act, mm -hmm. which was, came in after 9-11, mm -hmm. uh, now there's something called the National Defense of American That's Act. Right. Uh, which is, uh, allows the president the power to make any citizen in America disappear without any legal recourse whatsoever, without any constitutional rights, and the Bill of Rights is suspended once a, a letter of recommendation is signed against an individual or a group, and that whole 
group can disappear or that individual can disappear and there's no recourse whatsoever. So people today probably need to be aware, especially now that surveillance is uh, not only ever present in terms of the telephone, the cameras and computers and et cetera, but they, I think today's people need to be aware of something that we tend not to pay too much attention to, and that's agent provocateurs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in some cases, not even agent provocateurs anymore, undercover police that operates now with the mandate that it's legal to go into groups and spy on groups, it's, it's, it's legal, it's no longer illegal, uh, they can even encourage activities in, in, uh, uh, that used to be entrapment, now is like just finding out where a person's intentions are. Mm -hmm. There's a number of cases across the country now, especially in the Muslim communities, uh, but there's also cases uh, in terms of uh, immigration, right. there's cases in terms of the animal rights movement, there's cases in terms of the environmentalist movement, where people have been actually framed up or, or coerced into saying this or that and eventually locked up. Uh, uh, and uh, there's a number of political prisoners from all of those movements right. now in jail today. So people have to be careful how they organize and be careful who they organize with and try to organize within the boundaries where they can't, won't allow agent provocateurs to uh, encourage any kind of activities that might lead to their arrest. Uh, so we talked a little bit off air just we, as we were setting up to do this interview about this, this claim that the Panther Party was the greatest threat to national security of the United States. You have a quote in here from uh, Daruba bin Wahad, former Black Panther Party, Black Liberation Army uh, member, talking about what actually caused the threat, that it wasn't just the guns or the claims of violence or even notion of socialist politics, but, but very simple day-to-day -day programs that you all were running in the community. Could you talk a little bit about this, this claim, again, why they would focus on the Panthers as the greatest threat? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the, the threat was the ideology. I mean, this was the first uh, probably national organization in the black community that espoused uh, socialism, uh, was anti-imperialist, anti-capitalist, uh, and we put programs in down on the ground, whether it was free breakfast programs or free health clinics or buses to the prison or community control, uh, and that showed how we could organize in a socialist way and take care of ourselves and our community and use those resources in a collective kind of way. This idea and those programs resonated in other communities. Uh, uh, in the uh, Latino communities, the Brown Parade mm -hmm. sprung up. In the Puerto Rican community, the Young Lord sprung up. In the Native American community, the American Indian Movement sprung up. Uh, in the white community, the White Panther Party and the Patriot Party sprung up. And then a, around the world at that time, there was a Black Panther Party sprung up in Israel. There was a Black Panther Party sprung up in Australia. Black Panther Party sprung up in Africa. Uh, black solidarity groups sprung up in Asia. And the, the, prep, the, the proliferation of this ideology was what the government was in fear of because it was not just a black radical movement leading this, but working with Asians, uh, 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 brown people, uh, white people, uh, Native Americans, and so on. And this is what the government feared, the unity of all these people mm -hmm. and the recognition that they all had a common problem and a common foe. Let me ask you, in the, in the few minutes we have left, I, you know, we were also talking off camera a little bit about the popular imagery related and symbolism related to the Black Panther Party, specifically around some of the imagery in, in, in uh, the Super Bowl performance of Beyonce and her, some way her dancers were dressed with the afros and the berets and the bandolier and all. Um, how do you respond to that? When you talk to young people who might see in, a, a, a snapshot of an image like that or a symbol like that, what is it that you would like them to know or that you tell them about uh, uh, these symbols and how they relate to the actual party itself? 
Well, uh, the, the first thing is, I think, and this is the, the bottom line basic idea is theory and practice. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look and sound like anybody, and people do look and sound like anybody, but the determination of what's real and what's not is the practice. You have to look and see what those people are actually doing. And if those people are just making money, or if those people are just uh, entertaining people, or if those people are just there as a misdirection, then you realize that they are not genuine revolutionaries. They're not trying to change the conditions. They're trying to make a living, and they're trying to put people to sleep. You know, so I think it's important to recognize theory and practice, mm -hmm. because if you say all of this, but you're not doing anything, then that's really the bottom line. You're not doing anything. Well, Marshall Eddie Conway, thank you for joining us for this segment of The Real News and talking with us a little bit about your book, The Greatest Threat, The Black Panther Party and the COINTELPRO, and, or and COINTELPRO, and for being a greatest threat to talk about the greatest threat. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us here at The Real News. Again, for all involved, I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore saying, as always, as Fred Hampton used to say, to you we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody, and we'll catch you in the whirlwind.